So at this point, we've seen a lot of different ways to look at or to calculate um, the amount of product that's, that's produced in a stoichiometric calculation. In a lot of ways, they all have one unique theme. They rely on these coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. Um, we're going to do that again in this problem. We're going to have to calculate how many moles of nitrogen gas um, are produced when a certain amount of sodium azide decomposes. Um, sodium azide is a compound. You'll find that in your airbag. When it goes off, they, it is detonated. Um, whenever you're in a crash, it is detonated. And when it's detonated, it um, decomposes rapidly to produce um, nitrogen gas. And so um, notice that it's a 2 mole to 3 mole ratio. So 2 moles of sodium azide produce 3 moles of nitrogen gas. Now do be, do be warned, all right? Sodium azide is a solid, sodium is a solid, and nitrogen is a gas. And we are dealing with nitrogen, the gas, as our product in this particular calculation. And so it's going to ask us what volume of that sodium uh, or of that nitrogen gas is produced. And we are only going to be able to calculate moles or grams stoichiometrically. Um, that's as far as we'd be able to get for any product or any reactant in a stoichiometric calculation. So because this is a gas, we can then go on to use the ideal gas law um, in this calculation, and we can take the moles of nitrogen gas that, that would be produced from the decomposition, and we can then plug everything into the ideal gas law. Um, that would not work if we were dealing with sodium or we were dealing with sodium azide, because they are solids. Solids are not gases, so we can't use the ideal gas law. All right, so we want to start with our 60 grams of sodium azide. And what we want to do is we want to calculate how much nitrogen gas. Now we could calculate how many grams, but we know already the ideal gas law is going to ask us for the number of moles of nitrogen gas. So we're just going to stop with moles of nitrogen gas, which, which is going to make our calculation one step um, quicker than it would be normally. Calculated the molar mass of sodium azide is 65.02 grams of sodium azide in one mole. So now I've calculated how many moles of sodium azide that I am reacting. And now in the reaction step, two moles of sodium azide produce three moles of nitrogen. So, at this point, calculated how many moles of nitrogen gas are produced, and we should get 1.3842 moles of nitrogen gas produced in the reaction. This should have three significant figures, but I'm going to carry all those digits forward to use the ideal gas law. Now, this is very similar to the plug and chug style of ideal gas law that we're used to. We're just going to start plugging everything in. So for instance, it tells us that the gas is produced at 1.1 atmosphere. We want to know what the volume of that gas would be upon reaction. We know our number of moles is 1.3842 moles. We're going to bring along that three significant figure uh, mark so that we know, even though we've got more digits. R, 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere mole Kelvin. And our temperature in this case is 353.15 Kelvin. Very much just a plug and chug style problem. Um, we've got two significant figures here, and we've got three to our gas constant, and we've got five to our temperature. So it's all multiplication and division. We should end up with two significant figures. I know that without doing any calculation. But when I punch this into my calculator, 
I get that volume to be 36.47 liters of gas that are produced. How do I know it's liters? Well, the ideal gas law is telling me that if I have my temperature or my pressure in atmosphere, my temperature in Kelvin, my amount in moles, then I should have a volume that would be liters. So I end up with that number of liters. It should have two significant figures. Just to refresh your memory, how do we figure out how, how to round this? Well, I'm going to count those two significant figures over from the left. So one, two. I'm going to round to that six place, or to the ones place, to that six. So I'm going to look at the number directly next to it, less than five. And so I end up with 36 liters of nitrogen that come from decomposition of the 60 grams of sodium azide. That's a significant volume. So a very sm a relatively small amount of sodium azide will produce a fairly large volume, which is why you might use that in an airbag. You put this small little canister there, whenever it um, decompose that material decomposes, that sodium azide decomposes upon impact of your car with some other object, then it decomposes, and remember, 60 grams, we could probably hold that in our hand. Although sodium azide is pretty nasty, poisonous stuff, so we probably wouldn't want to hold it in our hand. Well, we probably could hold it in our hand, but 36 liters, that's a significant volume, so enough to fill up an airbag, um, which would then cushion you or save you, um, possibly, whenever you were in an accident. So that's how you use the ideal gas law in conjunction with a stoichiometric calculation. Remember, this method only works whenever we're calculating moles of a gas. We couldn't plug moles of something else into the ideal gas law because that is a gas law, not a solid law, not a liquid law. Um, it is a gas law.